In this first video of the trauma series, we're going to be discussing the primary and secondary survey. Like ATLS, I'm going to use the ABCDE Advanced Organizer. Only instead of approaching the subject from the perspective of the pre-hospital provider, I'm going to tell that story in a slightly different way. When a trauma activation occurs, the trauma team enters the trauma bay. Everyone has a role to play. Vital signs, IV access, medications, fluids. Multiple people are working on the same patient at the same time. This version of the primary survey is going to be from the perspective of the team lead, who is a trauma surgeon. I'm making a big deal out of it because you might find similar content elsewhere, but without that perspective. So this may look familiar, but it is from the perspective of the trauma surgeon. The primary survey is done at the beginning, every patient, every time. The objective is to identify life-threatening injuries that warrant correction immediately that will kill the patient before they made it to the OR. You're gonna hear me say in every lesson, unstable, go to the OR, stable, go to CT scan. We're way before that. And in the advanced organizer for the primary survey is A, B, C, D, E. Only I modify it slightly and add a second C before the D and color code and separate the lines. The first ABC is much more important than the second C and the D and E is just a reminder. A stands for airway, B breathing, C circulation, the second C is circulation two, and you'll see why I do that. D is disability, and E is exposure. Airway, patency, pulse ox, ventilation, CO2, all very important things. But this ABCDE mnemonic, seen from the perspective of the trauma team leader, really comes down to three things. Airway, breathing, and circulation. Airway asks, do I need to connect their trachea to atmosphere with a piece of plastic? Do I need to intubate? That also could be a crake. Breathing asks, do I have to put a chest tube in? Will that save the patient's life? The chest tube is a thoracostomy. And circulation is, do I need to get into the thorax in order to alleviate pericardial tamponade or do a cardiac massage? That is, do I have to crack the chest? Do I have to do a thoracotomy? The others don't have such a direct actionable item. The primary survey begins by talking to the patient and assessing their airway, if it's patent or not. If it's not, or it's pending collapse, intubate. You then go on to use your hands and stethoscope to assess the thorax, looking for things like a tension pneumo. If you find a pathology, chest tube usually fixes it. And then also, the only reason for an ER thoracotomy in cardiac arrest is for a penetrating trauma to the chest where they were alive at some point between the trauma and the ER. The reason for that is you hope it's a pericardial tamponade and by going into the chest you can both alleviate the tamponade and do cardiac massage. You don't do anything else until you've got that past that point. Then, while people have been working concurrently, you say, ah, are they in shock? And What's their GCS? So once you get over this first bar, now you're into 
Circulation two, which is about shock. The blood pressure, giving fluids, and giving blood. Disability is targeting the GCS. And pupillary reactivity. What you're looking for is pending herniation. Is there evidence of increased intracranial pressure? And then exposure is not think about environmental exposure. It's literally expose them so I can see them. Remove all the clothes, which usually means being cut off since they're on a polytrauma and trauma activation, they're going to be on a spine board with collar. And then because you're removing their clothes, you are exposing them to potential hypothermia. So give them blankets and fluids that have been warmed. Let's look at that again. The primary survey, the goal, the purpose, is to identify life-threatening injuries. that would kill the patient even before they got to the OR. Every patient gets this every time. The fact that there is a trauma activation means the primary survey happens. You do not move on until all have been addressed. The tools you use primarily are clinical. Spoken voice, percussion, auscultation, but they are supplemented using screening tools. There's a supine chest x-ray and pelvis x-ray. These can be obtained while the team lead is conducting the primary survey. There's also the focused assessment with sonography for trauma. The FAST exam has a very specific location it looks for, looking for blood. But bedside ultrasound has now gotten so good, and it's not just those locations, you can use it to evaluate where you think you have a pathology. So I'm going to be writing FAST+. plus. Treatment is going to be intubation, thoracostomy, thoracotomy, and obtaining two or more large bore IVs, and they should be large bore 16, 18 gauge peripheral IVs. If they can't be obtained, then an intraosseous line should be established, usually in the tibia. It is a common misconception that central lines are good in the setting of trauma. Never the right answer. First, to place a central line, either in the femoral or subclavian veins, you have to be at the patient's side, which is where everyone else is too. You just get in the way. Secondly, everyone remembers the art of the fourth power business. So a w larger radius, bigger diameter means it goes in faster. P -p people forget though that length counts too. And so a central line is good for infusion of medications you want to be distributed everywhere. Drop it off right at the heart. It is not good for transfusion. If you want to slam blood products into someone, you need very short, very wide access, peripheral lines or intraosseous. And then some general treatments, oxygen, intravenous fluids, O negative blood as part of the initial resuscitation. And then from here, unstable patients go to the OR. And stable patients, and here's the only time you're going to see not CT scan, stable patients hang around for the secondary survey. The secondary survey picks up where the primary survey left off. The purpose deliberate and complete exam. They've already been stripped of their clothes. You do a comprehensive head to toe exam. 
you want to identify all injuries and their severity. And now is the time to reassess interventions from the primary survey. You gave blood and fluid. How is their blood pressure doing? Any patient who completes the primary survey and does not need to go to the OR gets the secondary survey. And just like there's a team working during the primary survey, so too is the secondary survey. The team leader does the head-to-toe exam while everyone else continues to do their work while there's ongoing resuscitation. The tools here, no different. There's the clinical findings, hands, stethoscopes, point of care ultrasound, those x-rays, which should be repeated if any tubes were put in, and then the CT scan. CT is the best way, most convenient modality to evaluate trauma. You can only go to the CT scanner if the patient is stable. And we're going, you're going to identify every injury the patient has, the treatment for which will be the rest of this trauma series. At the end of the secondary survey, or if they become unstable during the secondary survey, they go to the operating room. The definition of unstable will be hemodynamic instability and something else in each of the lessons. And if stable, give it a CT. And when they come back from either the tertiary survey is just a repeat of the secondary survey over and over again, knowing that they may cross the threshold for going back to the CT scanner or to the OR or discharge. All right, so with this perspective, I'd like to go back into each one of the ABCDEs and explore it a little further. The first being airway. You need a patent airway. And an airway is patent if the person is awake and alert, is able to breathe and talk, and has none of the following. That's without. Tracheal deviation, this is just a list. Strider. Gurgling, accessory muscle use, and a neck hematoma. That means you basically just look and talk. You can also do a jaw thrust before deciding to tube somebody, and you can use ancillary tools like oxygenation. If you decide that the airway is not patent or is pending collapse, then you have to secure a connection between atmosphere and the trachea. That's done with an endotracheal intubation. If the patient is awake, that will include rapid sequence induction. If you can't do the intubation, either because you can't see the trachea or because the attempts have failed, the other option is a cricothyroid otomy. A needle version of this pre-hospital intervention and that does not work in the hospital. If you can't tube them, you cut through the thyroid and the cricoid cartilage and put a tube 
through that. If you think there's going to be a long-term need for that, the surgical tracheostomy can be done early. Breathing isn't actually about breathing. It's about the lungs, or at least the pleural cavities. It's about the thorax. You do care about oxygenation. 